Huge thank you to my eight members on YouTube. Thank you so much for supporting what I do. OBS Shader Filter is an incredible plugin that you can download for your OBS. It gives you the ability to add custom shaders into your OBS so you can do some awesome and wacky effects with it. Tonight, we're going to be going through every single shader and effect that comes with OBS Shader Filter when you first download it. Let's go. Just a quick little plug before we start this video, my friend Lazarus and I started working on our own record label, providing you some really high quality, exciting, and best of all, DMCA free music for you guys to use on your streams, YouTube videos, or wherever else you guys wanna use. It's a very early start to the project, so at the moment we only have four songs, but it's available on pretty much every platform, Spotify, Apple Music, you name it. If you guys want to show the support, the link to the Spotify playlist is going to be on the description. We also have a Twitter page as well, if you guys want to check it out for yourself. Show some love and support to Digisonica. It's a project that I'm really passionate about, and I can't wait to share more with you guys. How's it going, guys? Hope you're all having a fantastic day. My name is Synchro. Guys, tonight's video is all about OBS Shader Filter. We're going to be teaching you guys how to install OBS Shader Filter, and then we're going to be going through together through every single effect and shader that it comes with the download. All 69 of them. Nice. Let's not waste any time and get right into it. Let's install it first. First of all, to install it, we got to download it. So click the link on the description and you'll be taken to OBS forums. Once you're in the website, simply click the go to download button. Once your file is downloaded, simply double click to open the zip, open the OBS studio folder, copy everything inside of it, and then drag and drop into your OBS directory. If it asks you to replace anything, just say yes. And that's how easy it is to download and install the plugin. Let's boot up our OBSs and we're going to go through every single shader and effect. Here we are on our OBS, guys. And before I start showing off all the effects and shaders, let me teach you guys how to use the plugin. So head over to your source or scene that you want to apply the effects to, right click and head over to filters. On effect filters, click the plus button and then head over to user defined shader. Tick the box that says load shader from text file and then click the browse button. Here you will see all of the shaders and all of the effects available at your disposal. If you use a shader file, it should work straight out of the box. However, if you are using an effect file, for example, you need to make sure that you tick the box, use effect file before loading up the shader. If you're having issues with the effects crashing, I found that loading them up this way kind of minimizes the crashes just a little bit. Click load shader text from file and load up the effect first. Then turn on the use effect file, turn load shader text on file off, and then load it back. And it shouldn't crash. For some reason, I found that doing it this way doesn't crash as often. It can still crash, it just doesn't do it as frequent as before. The first shader on the list is add. Add acts as a blending layer, just like you can use in Photoshop. It removed the darker tones of an image and only revealed the lighter tones. When you select the shader, all you have to do after is select an image that you want to add to the source or the scene that you're applying the filter to. Unfortunately, this shader has been pretty much made obsolete in the latest versions of OBS. On OBS, now you can apply several blending layers to any source that you want, which unfortunately has pretty much made this shader redundant. Next one is the animated texture effect. Unfortunately, I was never able to get this effect working because it just crashes my OBS. Our third shader is the ASCII shader. This shader turns anything you apply the filter to into ASCII art. It's incredibly customizable and it can change things like the color, make it monochrome, and even change the scale and the size of the fonts that make up your visuals. Number four is aspect ratio which unfortunately ended up being a plugin that just didn't want to work for me. For me, there were no options being displayed and I have no idea what it's meant to do. Number five is the background removal effect. The instructions for this one is for you to take a screenshot of your room without you in it and then add it as a target image. I'll be honest, it didn't necessarily work as intended for me. However, I can see exactly what it was trying to achieve. Next, we got blend opacity. This one allows you to add a gradient that lowers the opacity of a certain part of your screen. It's super customizable. You can change the rotation, the offset. You can change how harsh it is and how soft it is. You can even make it move. And if you happen to have another source behind the source that you applied the filter to, it will be revealed behind it. Next, we have Blink. Blink is self-explanatory. It makes it so your source blinks and has a customizable speed. You can make it so it goes fast or you can make it so it goes slow. It'll also reveal whatever is behind the source. Next one available to us is the Bloom Shader. If the name of the source wasn't obvious enough, it gives you the ability to add bloom to your shaders and you can make it as soft and as harsh as you want. Border Shader. So I tried a lot of things to get the shader working and it just wouldn't work for me no matter what I did. I don't know if I installed it wrong or if I enabled it wrong, 
but I tried everything and it just wouldn't work. BT601. I have no clue what this shader does. I did, however, notice that the color of my camera changed ever so slightly when I had the shader on. BT709. Does the exact same thing as the previous shader, only with a different tone of color. No settings, no configs, nothing. Burn shader. Changes the source that it's applied to into clouds, smoke, whatever this is. It's incredibly customizable, however. You can change things like the speed, the gradient, and you can even add an image to the burn gradient. Adding an image to the burn gradient did give me a strange result. The next up is the cartoon effect. The cartoon effect is self-explanatory. It makes you look a little bit like a cartoon. You can change the amount of colors visible and you can also change the level of detail. Cell Shaded Shader. This is a filter that I legitimately enjoy. It adds a cell shaded like filter to your source that you apply it to. And the best part about it all is that you can literally configure to your heart's desires. You can literally make yourself look like Borderlands. It is so freaking cool. I absolutely love the shader. Color Grade Filter. The Color Grade Filter lets you load up LUTs or look up tables and then allows you to customize the LUTs to your liking. Darken Shader. I genuinely have no clue what this plugin does or what it's meant to do. There are no options. I've tried it in multiple sources and nothing happened. Divide Rotate. This filter adds some weird geometry and it kind of like masks out your image. You can also add an image as well and made some trippy effect with it. I don't really know how to explain or describe this effect. There's a lot of customization that you can do with it. You can probably cook something cool up with it if you experiment it enough. Divide, rotate, convert. Pretty much the same shader, only with a few different options. Not much difference here. Doodle effect. Okay, so I don't know if this was the intended result of this effect, but this is the result that I got. For some reason, all it would do is distort my image and it would jump all over the screen. You can change the speed in which it does that, but I don't really see the use of this. Drop shadow. Self-explanatory, it's just a simple drop shadow. You can change the offset, you can change the blur. I haven't found a way to change the opacity, however, but you can change the color, which is pretty cool. Drunk Shader. This shader gives you a bunch of blooms and blurs that you can use to kind of make the image a little bit distorted and quote unquote drunk. It lets you offset the light in elements of your webcam to kind of give this really strange drunk vibe to it. It's kind of hard to explain, but hopefully you guys can understand. Edge Detection Shader. Self-explanatory, it detects some of the edges of the elements in your webcam and gives you the ability to either change their color or the opacity on them. You can make it so the detection is a little bit more sensitive. You can make it so it's a little bit rougher around the edges. It's a really fun little shader. Ember's effect. This one's a pretty cool one, but I don't particularly see the use of it. It gives you the ability to make your own ember effects directly in OBS, and there's huge amounts of customizability. You can increase the amount of embers, you can remove the smoke background. It's pretty cool, but I don't see where someone would use it. Emboss. So I don't know how to describe this one, but basically it turns your image grayscale and gives this 3D-ish effect. There's probably some cool stuff that you can create with this. There's a little bit of customization as well. So you'll just have to experiment. Filter template effect. Judging by the name, I imagine this is used as a template to make your own effects because when I loaded it up, it had nothing in there. Filter template shader. I imagine it's the same thing as the last one, only for shaders instead of effects. Fire shader. Adds a customizable fire effect that you can change up bunch of options in. You can even apply it directly on top of the source that you're adding the filter to. Fire 3 effect. Very similar to the previous shader, only the fire is a lot more different looking. There are also a couple of more options that you can fiddle around with. The frosted glass shader. This gives you the ability to add and customize a frosted glass effect on your streams. You can make the effect look really harsh or very smooth. Gamma correction shader. This shader allows you to change the gamma of your source with the individual colors rather than everything at once. However, I found that overdoing the values can also cause it to crash. So just be careful. Gaussian blur effect. Unfortunately, this was one of the effects that crashed me immediately upon loading it. I could not get any more information on it. Gaussian example effect. I could not for the life of me find out what this effect does. I did plenty of experimentation, messed with the settings, and 
nothing nothing really changed and yeah i just could not get it working gaussian simple lives up to the name adds the ability so you can add a very simple gaussian blur effect on your source or scene however it still doesn't look as good as the ones provided by stream effects glass shader this adds a highly customizable gloss like texture on top of any source or scene that you apply it to it's actually really funky and you can actually experiment with it and get all sorts of different looks with it glitch analog effect Unfortunately, another effect that instantly caused me to crash. Glitch Analog Shader. Adds a very customizable, but also very strange looking glitch effect. There's a lot that you can do with this, so just take some time to explore the options. Glow. Liz up to the name, adds a very customizable glow shader that lets you, well, make your source glow. <laughs> Gradient. Adds a gradient with a lot of customizability. You can change the colors, the brightness, the opacity. You can even make it pulse. Hexagon. Adds a hexagon overlay on top of your sources. You can change the amount of hexagons. You can change the opacity of them. You can increase or decrease the borders. You can make it a little bit more blurry if you want. You can even animate it. Luminance. I don't necessarily know how to explain this one very well. From what I notice, it takes things like dark tones or even light tones if you choose to do so, and then removes the opacity on them. So any really dark tones will just have no opacity on them at all, revealing whatever is behind your source at the time. Luminance Alpha Effect. Pretty much does the same thing as the last shader, only with a few more customizable options, and it's an effect instead of an actual shader. Luminance 2. Pretty much the same as the last two effects, only this is the sequel that we never thought we were going to get. This is pretty much the first luminance effect, except it has more options and it's a lot more optimized. You can do so much more changes and in turn you can do a lot more effects using this one instead of the other two. Matrix effect. Adds a highly customizable matrix-like falling text effect. I don't really see the purpose when you can actually just download a video file of falling text and add that instead. Multiply. Pretty much the exact opposite of the add shader. Essentially, instead of you removing the darker tones like the add one would, you're actually removing the lighter tones instead. Just like the add shader, it is pretty much rendered obsolete because of the latest versions of OBS. Night Sky. Adds a fully customizable night sky background that you can change the colors, the amount of stars, the speed of the wind, you name it. Berlin Noise. Adds a really nice and highly customizable cloud effect. You can change the opacity of the edges of the clouds and so much more. You can even make it so it reveals whatever is behind the source that you currently have it applied to. Pixelation Effect. Pretty much does exactly what the name says it does. It basically pixelates any source that you add it to. Pixelation Shader. Pretty much the exact same thing as the previous effect, only has better customizability, at least in my opinion. Pulse Effect. I absolutely love this effect. It basically makes it so your source can pulse and you can actually select how far and how high it'll pulse, the speed in which it'll pulse. It's great for effects like earthquakes and stuff like that. It's really, really fun. Rainbow Shader. Probably one of my favorite shaders in this list. This adds a rainbow gradient that you can configure to your heart's content. You can change the brightness and luminosity, the saturation, you can animate it, you can change the rotation. It's incredible. One of my favorites of all times. Rectangular Drop Shadow. I don't know if this shader was broken or it just didn't work out for me. It didn't look like a shadow and it didn't act like a shadow either. It was very, very strange. Remove partial pixels. So on the notes of this shader, it says that it's excellent for cleaning green screens. I unfortunately don't have a real green screen, so I tried doing it with a virtual green screen and I didn't notice much difference. Repeat effect. A very simple effect that succeeds in one goal and that is basically repeating the source as many times as you want. Repeat texture. Pretty much the same thing as the lost effect, only you can select an image or a texture and make a repeat. There's some other options that you can fiddle around with as well, and it gives some really weird and trippy effects. RGB color wheel. Adds a rainbow color wheel that you can tweak, change how it rotates, and even the color depth. You can change the brightness, the opacity, and even make it so it blends in better with the layer that you're putting it in. The rotato effect. This effect works best with a picture of a potato.
I'm just kidding, by the way. This shader essentially makes it so the source that it's being applied in will rotate right and left. You can change how far it'll go and even how fast it'll go. Rounded Rectangle. This shader is an absolute lifesaver for those that want to have rounded edges on their stream and don't want to have to be bound to using a mask. You can round the edges of your source as much as you want and you can even add a border. Albeit the border looks ridiculous and I wouldn't recommend anyone using it. Rounded Stroke. This is pretty much the same as the last plugin. It gives you rounded corners, but this time around, it's a little bit more optimized and the borders are also not as bad as the last one. Scan lines. Pretty much adds a scan line effect that you can customize to your own liking. It's a very simple plugin. It does what it says it does and it works really, really well. If you're trying to make yourself look like an old TV, well, this is a good plugin to work with. Selective color. I genuinely like this shader. It gives you the ability to remove specific colors from the source that it's implemented in. If you want to, for example, remove all the blues in the source or scene that it's in, you can do that and it's super, super customizable. The shake effect. Pretty much lives up to its name. It lets you add a shake or a warble effect onto your source and scene. You can customize it to make it super, super intense or just a small little tremor. Shine effect. An interesting effect that has a very inconsistent result for some reason. You basically choose an image and then it basically shines that image after a couple seconds on your source. Simple gradient shader. Very, very simple. It adds a customizable gradient that changes into a bunch of different colors. You can change how the gradient looks and you can change the opacity, add lens flares and much more. Simplex noise. Adds a moving and customizable effect that you can implement on your current layer. There's quite a little bit of customization, but you can do some really interesting stuff with it. You just gotta get creative. Spotlight. Adds a moving and configurable spotlight to the source. Whatever the spotlight is not shining at becomes invisible and reveals whatever sources are behind. Two pass drop shadow. Adds a customizable drop shadow behind your source, but it isn't very good. VHS. This is a really fun one. It adds a fully customizable VHS distortion effect that you can change to your liking. I absolutely love this effect. Vignetting. I really wanted to like this vignetting because of the fact that it shows whatever source is behind the current one that I'm applying it to. I thought that was a very unique thing to have. But I really hate it because for some reason it increases the brightness of the source that it's in. And there's no way to turn it off. And finally, the zoom blur shader. This one adds a really fun, highly customizable zoom blur effect to your source. You can even animate it, which is awesome. So there we go, all of the 69 filters that come included in the OBS shader filter. There's a lot more out there that you can download and add to it. You can even make your very own shader filter as well. It opens up the opportunity for you to make a lot of crazy and unique effects on your stream. Do be careful with some of the shaders though, because unfortunately some of them can actually use quite a lot of your GPU and could cause your stream to lag. So just be aware of that. Out of all the awesome shaders that you saw today, tell me in the comments which one was your favorite. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Thank you so much for your time. I hope this video was able to help you or a friend of yours in any way, shape, or form. If you have any questions and want to learn more, come check us out on Twitch. I stream Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday starting at 4 p.m. Australia West Standard Time. Love to see you there. That's all for this video, friends. I hope you all have an amazing day and an amazing stream. And if you guys want to check out some more cool tutorials and learn how to do some awesome things on your stream, then you'll be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out these two videos. Trust me, you won't regret it.